Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to add final improvements to a captured mesh sequence. Specifically, I will show you two post-processing steps. In the first step, we're going to fix the parts of the eyelids that make contact with the eyeball surface. In the second step, we will fix the intersections of the lips. As is traditional, let's start by loading a neutral mesh. I'm going to drag and drop the L2 neutral mesh to the graph editor. Now let's load the generic eyeball geometry from the gallery. In the previous steps, we used a flat eyeball mesh. This time, I'm going to use a mesh that has a convex bump representing the cornea. Now let's load the previously created transforms to translate the eyeballs to the eye sockets of the actor. To do that, I'm going to use a load transform node. As you can see, in some areas the eyeball intersects the eyelids. In other areas, there is a gap between the caruncle and the eyeball. It would be great if we could fix these problems in one frame and propagate the changes to every frame of the sequence. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We've already fixed the neutral mesh so that it perfectly adheres to the surface of the eyeball. Let me load this fixed mesh here. Let's create a mix geom node to demonstrate the fixes that we've made. This is the mesh before, and this is after the fixes. Now let's see how we can propagate these changes to every frame of the mesh sequence. Let's start with loading the mesh sequence from the guidable delta mush step. I'm going to drag and drop the PLY sequence here. So this is what our mesh sequence looks like. Let's also load the eyeball rotation animation from the eye interpolation step. To do that, I'm going to use another load transform node. Let's rename this node to left eye rotation. This node loads the rotations of the eyeball around its center. Then we need to put the eyeball into the eye socket. We can use a copy transform node to apply the origin to eye socket transform that we previously loaded. Okay, now we have all the meshes in place. To fix the eyelids in every frame of the sequence, I'm going to use a Keep Distance node. The first input of the node is going to be the current frame of the mesh sequence. The second input is the current state of the eyeball. The third input is the cleaned up neutral geometry that we're going to use as a reference. The fourth input is the eyeball geometry corresponding to our neutral reference. Let me use the Mix Geom node to demonstrate the result. This is the state of the mesh before the fix, and this is after. The idea of the Keep Distance node is very simple. For every vertex of the reference mesh, we store the distance between this vertex and the eyeball surface. Then, for a given frame of the sequence, we find the current distance between the same vertex and the current eyeball surface, and we move the vertex towards or away from the eyeball to restore the same distance as on the reference. Note that for now, 
the Keep Distance node affects every vertex of the face. We can limit this effect so that it only affects the edges of the eyelids. To do that, we can provide the node with a vertex mask. In practice, I prefer to create this vertex mask based on a polygon selection. Let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to use polygroups to select the eye socket, the inner eyelid polygons, and the caruncle. Let's exclude the right eye from the selection for now. Now, let's use a polygon selection to vertex mask node. Then let's use a Modify Vertex Mask node to smooth the borders of the selection. I'm going to switch the mode to Smooth and set the Smooth Radius to 0.15. With this done, let's plug the mask into the Keep Distance node. OK. Now you can see that the fix is only applied to the inner parts of the eyelid and has a minimal effect on the likeness of the actor. Let's apply the same modifications to the right eye. I'm going to copy these three nodes. Now I'm going to replace the word left with the word right in the parameters of the nodes. Then, let's duplicate these three nodes. I'm going to take a moment and change the polygon selection to the right eye. Finally, let's copy the Keep Distance node and connect all the inputs. OK, so here's the effect before and after the fixes. Now, let's take a look at the second problem that we can often find in the mesh sequences. Let me switch to orthographic camera and zoom in on the lips. As you can see, there is a slight intersection between their lower and upper lips. Let's see how we can fix it. To do that, I'm going to use a Fix Intersections node. All we need to do is to plug our mesh into the first input of the node. There we go. The node just automatically fixed all the intersections. If we turn off the wireframe and look from the front, you can see that the effect of fixing the intersections is going to be very noticeable in the final look of the model. By default, the Fix Intersections node will operate on the entire mesh, including the eyelids. If you would like to limit the effect only to the lips area, you can provide the node with a vertex mask selection. Let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to roughly select the inner part of the lips. Let's plug the vertex mask into the second input of the node. Specifying the vertex mask greatly reduces the time of computation. Finally, Let's create a Save Vertices node.
I'm going to create a folder called Keep Distance and Fix Intersections. Let me set the file name to frame for hashes.ply. All right, if we click Compute Frame Range and process the entire sequence in batch mode, we'll have a result like this. I hope you like this tutorial. Goodbye, and stay tuned for new videos.